Now, just as I was putting you to sleep with my other videos, I'm going to hit you with one more. And this one's going to finish you off. No, I'm just kidding. The aspirating technique is something that is very, very interesting. And you're thinking right now about hitting that skip button. I know you are. You're thinking, I know how to aspirate. I do this every day. What are you going to teach me? I'm going to show you something really interesting about this that I didn't know. So let's say, for example, we're going to do our lower block. So we're going to do our IAN block. The way that we would normally aspirate is we enter in here, we contact our bone, we pull back on our plunger, and we see if we get any blood entering this carpule. If there's no blood entering this carpule, chances are we're not inside a vessel. Now I said chances are. And the reason I said that is because we may actually be in a vessel, just we got a negative aspiration. And it's actually a false negative. Now the reason for this, and this is kind of rare, but what can happen is this bevel on our needle, as it goes into the vessel, can actually rest against the vessel wall. And as you pull back on your plunger, the vessel wall is sucking in and it is occluding the lumen of this needle, which is preventing any backflow of blood into your carpule. So you may aspirate thinking you're in the clear, and then you may deposit your anesthetic, and you're going to get an intravascular injection without even knowing it. So the way that we avoid this is to go in, we're going to contact bone, we're going to aspirate. If it's negative, chances are we're not in a vessel. Then what we're going to do is we are going to rotate our syringe slightly. And it doesn't matter how much here, but you want to just take the bevel of that needle and you want to move it off the vessel wall if it is potentially against there. And you want to aspirate a second time. When you do that, if it's negative, odds are good that you are no longer in a vessel or you aren't in a vessel, so you can deposit your anesthetic. I would caution you in areas when you're maybe not resting firmly on bone and you have some kind of seesawing motion where maybe you're entering slightly more as you're injecting uh, and you're not aware, say in a, a PSA block, for example, that you should try to aspirate again when you're partway through that carpule to make sure that you're still not in a vessel because it doesn't take much. You move a few millimeters, you may have entered a vessel and not even known. Okay, so this is a very interesting tip, I thought, something that I never considered until I learned about it, and hopefully now it's something that you will consider uh, so that you can avoid these adverse reactions to anesthetics that we sometimes get from intravascular injections.